Hello YouTube, I'm APC, and today I'm making a tutorial for the Seaforge GFX channel. So this is going to be in the Paint.net Paint tutorial, and I just want to showcase some of the effects um, you can use in Paint.net. Um, this is what I think is the fun about photo editing. You can draw something out, just literally scribble stuff down, and you throw effects on top of it, and it looks really cool. And Paint.net, I mean, probably didn't have as many as Photoshop or GIMP, but they have quite a few, and they're really fun to play with, play around with. So that's what we're going to do today. To start off, we're going to change our colors around. I'm going to make one of them black, and I'm going to make the secondary white. There you go, so it's black and white. And for the first effect, I'm going to do effects, render, clouds. Clouds can going to be the first effect we're going to work with today, clouds. So um, I use clouds a lot for textures. It's good for generating textures. And um, so I probably should move this color window, but you can, hopefully you can see it well enough. So you can ch change around the scale. You can change around the roughness. And then blend mode. Yeah, I guess you can play around with that as well if you wanted to. That's probably if you have a layer under it. But then um, or see if you don't like it. So there we go. We have a cloud. So now we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. And we're going to scribble some stuff down. So I'm going to select the, what is it called, paintbrush? Yes, paintbrush tool. I'm going to set the brush width to about 10. I'm going to change my color around to, let's say, red. Alright, so go ahead and scribble some stuff down. Just scribble. And then let's add another color to go on top of it. Let's go with green or so. Now scribble that on top of it. And then we'll go with yellow and I'll just scribble some more. Alright, so obviously this looks horrible, but now we're going to start looking to make it look cooler. Next effect we're going to use is dense. Dense. So, there's another effects, distort, dense. This is probably my favorite effect because, I mean, I just think that that looks so, so cool the way it squiggles around and that kind of stuff. So, you know, you change the scale to change how much, how big the dents are. You can change the refraction to, to change how much they curve around. So, if you can do it lower, they're just a little bit squiggly and then really high, they, they a lot of curvature. Roughness. Yeah, you can see what that is. Looks like paint if you do it high enough. Yeah, so that's roughness. Let's see, pretty low roughness. Okay, tension. I guess I'm a little confused about the difference between fraction and tension, but if you don't know, then just mess around with the values until they, you get something that looks cool. So I'm going to go with lower tension, uh, maybe higher fraction, scale, something like that. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, and now on. Um, now we've got that done, let's go to effects, distort, polar inversion, polar inversion next effect that we're going to use. And that sort of just um, completely uh, turns into this warp type thing where it, where it sort of tiles the, um, the uh, image you have and curves it and then creates this sort of warp type thing. And then there's different, um, you, of course you have the amount, how, how big it is. And then you have offset where you want to be centered. I want to be centered in the center. And then um, you have these different edge behaviors. And um, wrap and reflect are pretty similar, but I like to use clamp. If I've, lately, I've been using clamp more and more often because it's nice when you have something happening in the center, and then you can create this nice graphic along the edge. That's that's what we're gonna use for today. So I'm gonna create a new layer, and let's see. I'm gonna change my color over to blue, and I'm going to put some stuff in the center. So I'm gonna scribble some more. So I'm just going to scribble. Okay. Next. Next tech we're going to use. Go to effects, blurs, radial blur. So this will make it spin around and, and have it blur that way. I actually don't use this effect too often, but I found today that um, this is a pretty useful trick. Pretty cool trick. Let's see. So if you only do a little bit, you barely notice it just along the edges it blurs, but if we do go higher, it sort of becomes like like a circle, circular pattern. So that I, that thing that looks really cool with them um, with this effect, and it sort of adds some more stuff to the center. Now, um, let's say I'm going to create a new, new layer again. I'm going to change the color to pink. And I'm going to make a little, so we have this circular pattern here, and I'm going to make another circle on the center to where to add to add to it just to add more graphics to it so 
there's my circle, and to make it blend in with the blue stuff I already have, and go to Blur's Gaussian Blur. This I probably use this effect m m most often. So at zero, it's nothing, but the higher I make it, the more it's blurred. This is probably the um, what you what you would think of as blur effect, Gaussian Blur. So that's Gaussian Blur, and it makes you, I saw it made the purple ring look blurry. I'm going to create another layer, and I'm going to put it under everything we have, except for the cloud gray st stuff. Alright, so let's see. I'm going to make a color red. Increase the brush width, brush width to about 50. And I'm just going to draw a line in the background like so. Alright. Which brings us to our next effect. Effects distort frosted glass. This will sort of... um. It's not pixelate, but it'll it'll sort of scatter the pixels around. So, so maximum scatter radius is how far you you'll you'll allow the pixels to be scattered. Minimum scatter scattering radius is the least you want them to be scattered. So, as you can see, if if you have a minimum scatter radius that high, you see you have like sort of a void in the center where they, they um uh aren't at all. Okay, so I'm gonna go with like a pretty high scatter radius, I guess. And then little how many scatter medium scatterers and the smoothness, let's see. How smoothly they're distributed, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, well, you can see for yourself. Okay. So that's the frosted glass effect. And now I think the last one we're gonna do, yeah, this is the last one we're gonna do is tile reflection. So you can split in tiles. So how big the tiles are right now. I have a little, really small, so you barely know. You really see the tiles, and you can make them really big if you wanted to. So there you go. You can see the tiles. They've changed the curvature. Is how much curved along the edge of the tiles? If it's if it's around zero, let's see, in the close to zero, you can barely see the tiles. But the more more are you, the more you see that curved on tiles. And if you make really high, it just looks weird. So I'm going to go with something like that. I'm going to make the tile size smaller. You can make the angle about 45. House has a little bit smaller. Mm. A lot of playing around with, with, with how much you do it. Let's see with, with how um, how um, much of each dial you use. I think that looks cool. It creates a little graphic in the background. And I said that was the last time we are going to use it, but I lied. There's one more we're going to use. We're going to go under Stylus and Outline. I find this is cool. It sort of fi finds different outlines um, based on the, the, where the difference is in op uh, opacity and that kind of stuff. So the thickness is how much outline is right now. It made the or What is it doing? Yeah. So thickness is how much outline is. We don't want that to be too high. Completely ruins our graphic. But then the intensity shows how colorful that line is, I guess. So I can make that really high and then we can put the thickness down a little bit more. And that looks pretty cool. So that is our graphic that and I think this looks really cool. All I did was scribble stuff down and play around with the effects. So um you may say this makes my eyes hurt, there's too many colors. My mom does say that I am um, don't have any sense for color combination, so I, I don't know. Maybe there's too many colors on one screen, but I think it looks really cool. And um, hopefully, even if you don't think it looks really cool, hopefully you got a good idea for a lot of the different effects that you can use um, in Paint.net. Like I, let's see, some some that I use a lot that I didn't talk about were uh, let's see, Fragment I use every now and then, which is a pretty cool effect. Uh, I use Crystallize and Bulge every now and then, also cool. Twist, twist is one I imagine is used pretty often. It's a pretty generic effect. Then noise, I can't imagine why I'd use that. And uh, glow just makes it makes things look a little cooler. And then um, that's basically everything. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot. And I guess I'll see you guys next time.